Good morning, my name is Jim Buckley. I'm director of the public health team here at CPW. Uh, the main fundamental principles and differences between siphonic and gravity, the most obvious is that um, a siphonic system can take double the volume that a gravity system can take at a very minimal. Uh, it's space saving because the zero falls, you've got less impact on the ceiling void and it's self cleansing as well. Uh, the biggest worry with most rainwater systems is you need to self cleanse the pipe work. With siphonic drainage, you have that massive volume of water and velocity and it cleanses the pipe work more efficiently than any other system. And design flexibility. With the software we use, we can change the design to meet the client's needs. I've got 20 years plus in the siphonic industry and that was both installing, designing, and also project managing the installs. And they took part in the UK, the EU, and the UAE. And we mainly focus on jobs such as airports, shopping centers, car manufacturing plants, and even we did some siphonic rainwater systems into harvesting and then into irrigation systems within the UAE. The biggest thing with siphonics, you've got to know the system parameters before you design and how, what, what le levels you're able to go to. You've got to know what issues are with the install. Is it easy to install? What's the constructability of it? And you've got to know where and when you need emergency overflows. So really with this system and most special systems experience is key. The main advantages of siphonic systems within large-scale commercial and industrial buildings, the biggest saving is going to be your underground system. Most people think when they see a rainwater system above ground, that's where the cost saving is. But with a siphonic system, you've got less downpipes, which means you've got less underground pipe work and save you thousands of the actual base build. Um, and because of its zero falls, it's a lot easier to saw modular, so a lot can be prefabbed off-site, taken straight to site, welded, makes the install a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. Yeah, so things to take into account, most importantly the roof size. Normally we expect a siphonic job to be the minimum 1,000 meters squared. There is a little bit of give and take with that, and some of the very experienced can look at what types of roof can be done. The next is the building type. There's different categories of risk of rainwater design, both for gravity and siphonic. But with siphonic design, with the category of risk comes with the need for overflows and protecting the building overall. And of course, the most obvious one is the geographical location, because obviously there's different intensities, different parts of the country, different parts of the world, they need to take into account. Okay, so we chose Gabrit to be the manufacturer we work with. Um, I have a history of Gebrit before, mainly because of the track record. They've got an unparalleled safety record, mainly down to the design software, but also their rail system they use, which is a very rigid system, which can take a lot of weight and different design parameters as well. And Gebrit got a very good reputation within Europe and the UK, and very good technical rapport as well with them. So it was really an easy decision to make to work with them. So the main advantage for siphonic drainage with sustainability and water conservation, it really goes hand in hand with water neutrality. And that's because there are zero falls to get to a certain location. You get more water to the tank. Um, traditionally with gravity systems, you are a little bit prohibited by the falls reaching the actual location. So you can only get so much rainwater to different tanks. With siphonics, you can get a lot more rainwater to the tanks which therefore more rainwater harvested and better for the water neutrality if it's a problem with the scheme. I think one of the main challenges of siphonic design, as is most special systems, again, is engineer experience. It's all right knowing the actual system, how it works, the functionality, but you need experience to know how to design it and where to install it. So it's really important to have that experience and know-how to put the siphonic system where it needs to be. You also need to look at roof sizes. 
you might want a siphonic system, but the roof size just doesn't suit the system at all. And that's where you have that know-how to say this would actually suit a gravity system and not a siphonic and vice versa. And then there's the height of buildings. People think siphonic systems could do anything and they can to a point, but with a really high building, you've got to think about slowing the water down. And again, that's engineer experience again, where you need to maybe install a loop just to slow the, fl the flow down. And then you've got the understanding underground system. With a siphonic system, you need to break the siphonic action. And to do that, you need twice the diameter of pipe work. Now, if you've got an underground system sized to a certain degree, where you say 150 mil downpipes, and you're coming down to 350 mil pipe to break the siphon, you've got issues there to discuss the underground system. So it's something to take into account that you need to, a whole knowledge of the building in total to see how you have from point A to point B to finish the scheme. From an architectural point of view, siphonic drain is has huge advantages. Firstly, is the actual ceiling void. You're taking a lot less ceiling void space so the room heights can stay at the height traditionally wanted by an architect. Because of that, you've got smaller diameter pipe work in zero falls, so you're less impact with the coordination and the building service zone required. And then again, you've got the less down pipes. So with this, you've got less areas you need to box up pipe work. And as gravity drainage relies on the actual fall of the pipe work to get to a certain area, Siphonics doesn't have this problem. We can take the siphonic drainage to a certain point, to a riser, and not rely on boxing out within IPSs or within cleaners, cupboards, things like that. We can actually go straight to a riser and all the way down. So the main key components of siphonic design software, uh, each company has their own specific K factors. So we're using the Gebra software at the moment and it has its own software which we integrated within the different packages. In terms of advancement, you'll probably see more Siphonic software integrated with BIM. Um, something we're working on now with Gebrit is to get it into our BIM models and how we plan that into future sort of in, um, designs. So the design considerations for Siphon Engineer, they first need to wear the British standard the BS8490 2007, and that stipulates the priming of a system, which is really important, because a siphonic system has got to be fully primed and functional under design conditions in under 60 seconds. And as well as that, they've got to be very aware of not just the maximum velocity, but the minimum velocity, because that's where you need yourself cleansing. And, and as well as that, they just need to be aware of the different guides out there. There is a siphonic guide, which gives you principles of how to design, and it's just that know-how and experience you need to refer to.